Did you know that one of the most common reasons for pets to need a veterinary visit is because of persistent itching? I'm Dr. M, welcome to BMC. Join me, you'll learn something today. First of all, it's important that we acknowledge there are three large categories that will cause pets to itch. One, we have fleas and other parasites. Two, we have food allergies. And three, we have environmental allergies. Environmental allergies are more common than food allergies, and I have previously covered food allergies and how to go about properly diagnosing them in another video. I will link that in the description for you. But Environmental allergies, we call this atopic dermatitis, and it is one of the most common reasons for veterinary visits. That said, we do need to make sure that a proper diagnostic workup is done, ruling in or out each of the other categories, along with remembering that there are some pets who will have, say, a flea sensitivity, a food allergy, and environmental allergies. Those situations can be a real challenge to manage, but a veterinary dermatologist is really helpful in those sorts of situations. Your GP veterinarian should be able to help you go through the beginning process of finding out if there is a parasite issue contributing to why your pet is itchy. They should also be able to help guide you on how to do a proper food trial to rule in or out a food allergy component. And then lastly, we're left with this environmental allergy category that we're going to talk about more in depth today. The most common symptoms will be itchy, red, inflamed looking skin. On dogs, this is more often on their faces, on their bellies, and on their feet. But cats, they don't like to play by the rules that every other species seems to. They do their own thing. And a cat with environmental allergies could have lesions showing up anywhere. Most often we will see it around their heads, but not always. It could be anywhere. People will also often note that their pet will be so itchy that they'll have trouble sleeping or they'll have trouble settling down to sleep and it can be bad enough that it will disrupt the person's sleep as well. You might also notice an odor to your pet that they didn't have before. For both dogs and cats, around 40 to 75 percent of patients that have atopic dermatitis, they will have a seasonal component to their itchiness, meaning you might notice that it's worst late summer. That's one of the worst times of year for many of our pets. For other pets, they might be worst in the spring. You'll just notice a kind of a yearly pattern that every year there's a seasonal component to when your pet's itching is the worst. Frustratingly, people often wait far too long with a pet that's itching before seeing their veterinarian. And I get told all the time by people that they have done a number of home remedies or things that are talked about on the internet before they see their veterinarian, which is very frustrating because that delay in treatment worsens the amount of suffering that the pet goes through. It also wastes money that the owner then may not have for appropriate research-based treatments. And some of these home remedies actually just make things worse. Yeah, they do. You're a good dog. A prime example of this is coconut oil. I have a video covering why it's not at all appropriate or effective for skin issues. I'll link that in the video description. There was actually some market research done on this that showed nine out of 10 people have tried an over-the-counter treatment or a internet remedy or something else before they see their veterinarian. This is unfortunate because these remedies at best will give a temporary a little bit of relief, but they do not address the underlying problem, they don't address any secondary infections that are present, and they don't give effective longer-term treatment for the itching. If your pet is itching, you need to book an appointment and see your veterinarian. That's all there is to it. So what is atopic dermatitis? It is a chronic skin condition that affects 10 to 15% of the dog population. We're not quite sure how much of our cat population it impacts. It happens when the dog's immune system is hypersensitive to something that's in their environment. This is a lifelong condition. There is zero cure for it. All we can do is work to manage this disease. Now having skin lesions 
is the primary symptom that we'll see. It's pretty uncommon for us to see runny nose or sneezing or runny eyes. That's maybe 10% of patients that have this. The vast majority will have the skin lesions. However, especially in cats, I talked about this in the feline asthma video as well, there will be some cats that will have asthmatic symptoms and the reason for those is atopic dermatitis. So checking for an allergic component to feline asthma is important. Now the pets that suffer from atopic dermatitis do have a poor skin barrier and when I was in vet school the way the dermatologist talked about it to us was if we imagine the skin layers as being a little bit like a brick wall when you have a good solid brick wall you have the bricks which would be the cells of skin and then in between you have the mortar and when everything is assembled properly and packed in tightly, you get a good barrier and nothing can get through. In dogs that have this atopic dermatitis, it's like they have a crumbling brick wall. They might have some missing bricks, the mortar won't be properly present, and so they have a poor skin barrier, meaning that things get through those cells and that causes the redness and the itching that your pet is experiencing. You will get this cycle of inflammation causing a poor skin barrier, allowing the foreign things through the skin barrier to cause more itching which causes more inflammation which worsens the skin barrier and it's kind of this nasty cycle and so when the allergens contact the skin this will trigger the beginning of the cycle and cause the start of your pet's itching there's also suspected to be a genetic component because there are some breeds and some families of our pets that tend to have more problems than others this is part of why if you are searching for a breeder talking to them about potential allergies within their lines is important and if you have a breeder who is breeding animals that have allergies that would be an unethical breeder they should not be breeding those dogs the most common allergens include dust mites dander or old skin cells molds pollens but it could be anything that's in the environment anything at all patients will typically start to show symptoms between six months and three years of age and when these dogs start to show symptoms often they will start by having cyclical symptoms but over time, some of them will progress to having symptoms year-round that no longer have a cyclical nature. So there are no specific tests that tell us, yes, this pet has atopic dermatitis. What we need to do is rule out the other possibilities. And then if we are left with an animal that still has itchy skin, then we conclude that there is atopic dermatitis present. And at that point, we may use some tests to try to narrow down what the allergens are that the pet is reacting to. So we first need to rule out things like parasites and food allergies. We also will use some response to appropriate treatments as part of our diagnostic testing. We also must check for and treat any potential secondary infections. So when we have that poor skin barrier, that also means the animal is prone to getting bacterial and or yeast infections. We need to do skin scrapes and look at those samples under the microscope to diagnose what type of secondary infection is present and formulate an effective treatment plan for it and then make sure that it's completely resolved before we stop the treatment. When diagnosing especially canine atopic dermatitis, some veterinarians will also use a list of criteria called Fabro's criteria, but the sensitivity and specificity of using this list of criteria isn't perfect, and so even if your pet doesn't meet that list of criteria, they may still have atopic dermatitis. In general, however, we say that atopic dermatitis is pretty likely if your pet has five or more of those criteria, plus we've ruled out out parasites, food allergies, and secondary infections. When we started editing this video, we discovered that it's actually a lot of material to cover, so we have split this topic into two. Next week, we will cover common treatments for atopic dermatitis. I hope that you will join us again next Friday and that you have the most wonderful week. YouTube thinks that you're going to love this video. We'll see you next time. Bye! People often wait far too long with a pet that's itching before seeing their veterinarian.